what is the true cost of rebellion? That was at the heart of the epic monologue given to us by Luthen Rail in episode 10 of Andor. Some have argued that that speech by itself is the best acting in all of Star Wars. It's definitely some of the best acting we've seen in this show. And this show is some of the best Star Wars we've gotten from the Disney era. Now, some people have even claimed that Andor is the best Star Wars we've ever gotten. Other people say that Andor is not Star Wars. We talked about that at length last week. But tonight, we are going to talk about the acting in this show. How great is it? Is it even great? Maybe you have a different opinion. Get active down in the chat below and let me hear your thoughts on that. We are going to play Quote Swap again, the Star Wars blackmail game. And uh, in our new segment, someone tries to attack the king. In, our, in real life, the king of England, uh, you might be surprised by what his punishment was. We're going to get into all of that tonight here on Coffee on Korriban. Welcome back to the show. It is very nice to be with you all here on Monday night. I try to be here at 10 and it doesn't work out. I got Padawans to get to bed. Sometimes they take a little bit longer, um, but you know, patience is the Jedi way. So <laughs> that's what we're working on. Uh, favorite quote of or favorite comment to the week rather is from Multipass. He says, when the writing is so good, there's no need for tropes. When all the elements come together beautifully, it gets us attached to a character that we've only known for three episodes. The amount of speculation on Kino's fate is a testament to the strength of Andor. I personally love the ambiguity and want this to be it because uh, what this episode showed me is that the rebellion is built on sacrifices made by the ordinary people, the unseen ones. I burn my life to make a sunrise that I know I'll never see applies not only to Luthen, but Lonnie, Kino, and ultimately Cassian himself. This show adds the gravitas that I longed for, and I'm here for it. Well, I'm here for it as well. I think a lot of people share that same that same outlook on this show. It, it, this is what we wanted, the, the seriousness, the, the gravity of it. Uh, it. It takes itself seriously, and it respects its audience enough to present them with something that they can take seriously. I think it does really well on that. So thank you, Multipass, for that comment of the week. Let's get into the chat real quick before we bring in our guests. Uh, we've got Charlie as the first person in the chat tonight. Here's a sip for you. Aussie Star Wars Dart, here's a sip for you. Isaac Kuo, here's a sip for you. Really been appreciating your comments recently. I really do appreciate that. Don, here's a sip for you. Hey, it's me. Jedi Hush, here's a sip for you. Aiden S, here's a sip for you. Matt Cave, here's a sip for you. Dale Erdman, here's a sip for you. And Israel Garcia, here's a sip for you. All right, so before we get started with the discussion for tonight, put down uh, in the comment in the chat right now, and if you're watching this after the fact, put in the uh, the comment section on the video. Oh, and my brother, here's a zip for you. Very nice to see you in the chat. Uh, thanks for watching. That is a lot of sips, and you know, at the rate this channel is growing. I'm going to have to have like three mugs on standby just to start the show. Uh, but go ahead and put in the comments or the chat, uh, what is your rating of this last episode of Andor out of 10? Uh, for me, it's a 10. It's, it's It doesn't get much better than that, uh, at least not that I've experienced. Uh, we got some polls that'll back that up as well to talk about. Um, but let's uh, first, um, Bryce, uh, his wife is my sister. And her birthday is tomorrow. So, sister, uh, sis, sis Corban, sister Corban, uh, happy birthday, uh, preemptively. I'll probably call you tomorrow, but there you go. Happy birthday. Uh, let's bring in our two guests. Uh, one of my favorite people on the internet. Uh, you guys know this guy. You better be subscribed to him if you're not already. Please do that. Sorry. 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 Sorry, everybody. 
<laughs> Mr. Matt Cave. <laughs> Hello there. I told you I was going to clip that. I, I'm so happy that it's you doing that. <laughs> yeah, who who else? Who else? Um, so first off, how did, how did you feel about this last episode of Andor? I, that... I, I gave it a 9.5. I, I, I feel like we're going to, and that was like, because I feel like, oh man, I was coming out of the gate as a 10, but I was like, you know what? I feel like they have something in store for us. Yeah. That's really going to, you, you can't, it it, it's crazy because it feels like this is the best it can get. How can it be topped? But it we've got a, like finale. a finale. Yeah. yeah. There's been, it, there've been a few finales. Like mm -hmm. episode three was the finale. And, and that's why I love that they're breaking it up into different arcs. It's the finale of each arc. And so there's a huge payoff mid season multiple times. Um, I, cause I feel like if they didn't do that 12 episodes, that's a lot. Yeah. That, that's a lot, but it feels so short because they've broken it up this way. And I think that was a really wise decision. Let's bring in our next guest. You guys love this guy. He doesn't have a channel. As far as I'm aware, uh, but he's got to start one. He's got to start one. You guys know this guy. Oh, it is so good. That's not where it's really good. Welcome. <laughs> hey, welcome back. All right, what to your own show. This? <laughs> I know. What do you think about this, uh, this last episode of Andor? Uh, okay, so this is the only one of the episodes so far that I have watched twice. I'll watch them all again. But in a week, this is the only one I've watched twice. It was that good. Um, what do I think of it? I'll watch it again. It is so good. But that's not what's real. No. <laughs> what, I didn't even know what the quote was. No, it's, um, it was so good. The acting was great. I think I was reading comments here. Tom Jensen just said, uh, great. it's great acting, yes, but great actors uh, gravitate to great writing. So it is a combo platter. It, I mean, it's like yeah. everything that we want. So, and, and that's really telling that, that uh, if I'm not mistaken, Tony Gilroy said that he's not even really a star Wars fan, but that's, that's what happens when you put quality a, 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 in the forefront above everything else, give us a quality show and then let the creative people that are helping you make it star Wars. And, and maybe that's, what's contributing to some people saying that this isn't star Wars. I get it if they're expecting the same stuff we've gotten from previous projects before. Uh, from, but the from quality my perspective, is it's not even the same excellent. caliber. It's not even in the same ballpark as um, the the big screen movies. It's a totally different class, and I'm not saying one's better than the other. This is I'm I'm so glad we have this. All right, um, it's, it's apples and oranges. Yeah, it is. Like it is. like if we if we only got this and never any movie, I hope we get Star Wars back on the big screen. Because because that's something I never really got to experience, even with the prequels. I was too young at the time to to watch the premiere of a new Star Wars movie. That I saw the, that with the sequels. Well, I just, we all I know just flashed back that. to Return of the Jedi, waiting in line at the theater on opening night at the theater. It mm -hmm. and it was wrapped around the building. It was bizarre party atmosphere, uh, and no one had seen it. And you had to plug your ears when the showing came out while you were waiting to go in because mm -hmm. people would say stuff. Oh yeah, and, and I, I remember that, and it was. It was so cool. Um, Rogue One being my favorite episode, I think. It's movie. up there. If not, it, yeah, episode movie. Yeah, yeah it's, it's up there in my top two, if it's not at the top. Right. Um, and, and, and so that's, maybe that's why I love this so much, because it's a feeder for that. Right. So on Rogue One, speaking about that, I was curious. And, and one of the comments um, recently on one of my videos uh got me thinking how does this compare with the other disney projects we've gotten and so i just posted a poll uh i'm going to tell you exactly how long ago um 58 minutes ago uh it's it's at a thousand votes so far nice. um it, the question is what is the best star wars content of the disney era sequels rogue one and or or mandalorian sequels have one percent i don't think that really surprises a whole lot of people <laughs> um rogue one is at 14 percent mandalorian is at 20 percent and Andor is at 65%. And we have no idea who this is going out to. Cur yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, the, I mean, it could, could the be people. It, Just may, maybe this is people that are like minded and YouTube knows to push them my way. Yeah. I don't really know. Um, but 1,000 people is not a huge sample size. But our poll of the week that. Okay, I'm let's come back to that at the end of the stream then and we'll see where it went. 
Yes, that's a very good point. Because then if you got a thousand in an hour, we should have some good yeah. data. <laughs> yeah. So the poll of the week I wanted to bring up is this one. Uh, all I said was and or is. And remember last week, the discussion was, okay, a lot of people like and or because the questions were and or is great, good, bad, or awful. And most of the people either said good or great. Um, but we wanted to break down that good and great of the people that like and or. How do they really feel about it? So this poll said and or is perfect, almost perfect, really good, or pretty good. So of the people that like this show, 8.3 thousand votes, 68% said perfect. 23% said almost perfect. <laughs> that, that, that's mind blowing. I would have thought it would be 50-50 between perfect and almost perfect. That, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> This that is so funny. Who wants to lick the batter? I love streaming with this man. <laughs> this is just the best. I, I love Beard Council. Oh, hello, it, Leia. This is such a great Beard Council's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that that poll really blew my mind because we were talking about that last week. Mm -hmm. it, it's just people that don't want to choose that it's just okay, and so they choose perfect because that's the only thing that they closely, you know, align with. But 68 to 23 saying perfect instead of almost perfect is really mind blowing. Yeah. And that look at that. That's over 8,000 votes. Yeah. That's not a small sample size. That was no. Cool. And I don't, I don't claim to know exactly what all of the Star Wars fans are thinking, like some major channels that can put a post out and get 100,000 votes. But that's not a small sample size. And, and of the people that that reached, almost 70% said it's perfect. Not even just almost perfect. So that that was really what was astonishing. The, what was the, what was the uh, almost perfect number? Twenty. So if you okay, so even if you took half of the perfect, if you said fifty percent of them are out of their mind, you're still at thirty four percent, and that's mm -hmm. still higher than anything else on there. Yeah. Right. That's crazy. Yeah, and and that's not a fluke of people. Oh, it's perfect. Because uh, I gave them the option of almost perfect. Yeah. But that's I don't know that that poll just really really blew my mind. Um, so let's talk about um, the acting. Um, Drone oh, Master says voted acting. for perfect. Um, I think this is the first time I've seen your name. If it is, here's a sip for you. Yeah, looks looks new to me. Yep, <laughs> I like it. Um, so let's talk about uh, the kind of the, the main theme of tonight's show in that is this the best acting we've gotten out of all of Star Wars? I'll, I'll throw it to you guys. It's uh, got to be really, uh, 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 yeah, be really close, right? Because I, I feel like, say what you will about the acting in the prequels, but I feel like there were certain things and aspects to the acting style of the prequels that made it great, at least in my yes. view. Um, this is a different type. This This is... I don't, it feels more. This is like professionally real. trained acting. Yeah, this is yeah, like totally different. A cast full of Alec Guinness. Like, it's yes. just like, I mean, uh, Skarsgård's performance as Luthen is just beyond amazing. Uh, Andy Circus, in my opinion, is this is one of the best performances I've seen from him. Uh, in so many different things, in, in many aspects. I've watched his performance performances in movies. I've seen his performances in video games. And now I'm seeing him in a series. Um, and I got to tell you, that entire sequence of him speaking to everyone over the, the mic throughout the station there, uh, I was honestly tearing up. Like I was like, this is unbelievable what he's doing right now. Yep. Completely I mean, agree. And, and that's what Don says it exactly right. Shakespearean level training. Um, I think it also goes with the vision of the directors because mm -hmm. you get in some, you know, Wookiee stuff in there and the director's like, you know, let's take it again. Ham it up a little bit. Let's let's get, you know, do some slapstick. And that's part of the director's vision for that episode. Right. There's none of that here. This is just straight up. Well, it takes acting. itself seriously. As I said in the in the yeah. beginning of the show, it, it it's takes a serious, itself seriously. It's a serious story, though. And it lends itself very well to that style of acting. And yeah. so it's a it's a really tough question to 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 answer, because, again, it's it's apples and oranges. This is 
this is what we were talking about earlier. It's hard to compare the the two because it's a totally different caliber to what we've gotten before. It's a, it's a different class. That's like what what's better, a Ford Raptor or a Porsche Cayman? <laughs> Depends Better on what you're what? using yeah. it for, right? <laughs> if you're if you're overlanding across the desert, it's going to be the Raptor. If we're taking it to the track, it's going to be the Cayman. So it, they're they're very different, and they serve different purposes. It's like what's um, better, longboard or shortboard? I can appreciate both of them, and they both have their place. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when you're going surfing, one's a longboard, one's a shortboard. Everyone's got their best and favorite, but it you know. I, I can appreciate both. I appreciate or when you're both. body surfing, you can be the longboard and I'll be the shortboard. I'll be the. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, would work too. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, uh, Father Time is quite a bit taller than I am. So, <laughs> yeah. We have the wrestling match to prove it. <laughs> That's true. Oh my. Oh, I got to get clips Clip of that. Ready. Oh, yeah. I got to get clips. We got to do, we got to, we got to stream that live at, at a rematch of that. I, I still love I, that, I, that I, terror I face. Going. <laughs> yeah, I'd love that. All right. Well, let's take a quick break in the conversation real quick. And let's talk about the way the news goes. The Republic has been reorganized into the first galactic empire. So I don't know if you guys heard this news story at all, but I heard it a couple days ago and I thought it, I had to include it. So the King of England... It's Charles, right? The new one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He was Chuck, just attacked. I called Chuck. All right. All right. King Chuck. <laughs> That's weird. Um, was just attacked uh, while greeting people. I forget what town he was in, but he was assaulted oh, uh, by one of the people in the crowd. Um, the guy threw eggs at him. The wow. attack on my life has left me scarred and deformed. <laughs> um, so, so first off, that's that's pretty funny. Not that he was attacked, but if he's going to be attacked, it's funny that it's eggs. Because because who does that? Over here. Yeah, I think the that's... booing that happened right before it. <laughs> but I, I've heard of things like this with like you know prime ministers or or people in you know whatever their equivalent of the Senate is or whatever, they, they get pied in the face or maybe that's Canada that does that, but it's pretty funny. Um, might've been hard to see in that clip, but the King's response was pretty dignified. He didn't cower and run away and stuff. He stood there and was like, who's throwing eggs? Who is throwing eggs at me? And I thought that was pretty funny. So what do you guys think the punishment was for the, uh, the attacker? What do you Ooh. think his, uh, his sentence was? Ooh. He's already been found guilty. Supposedly, all That's right. The last I heard is he was he was already uh, given his punishment. No tea for a week. <laughs> wow, that's, <laughs> that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's pretty know. funny. Was some sort of a uh, public shaming? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I was like, go right. over there. So his, uh, I don't think so. Beheading. Wow. No, and in the chats. I was that's that's beheading. what I thought is like, oh, he's he's lost his head. It's the king. We can't <laughs> assault the king. His his punishment was he is no longer allowed to carry eggs in public. <laughs> Appropriate. Okay. But strange. <laughs> that's uh, strange. I I don't. I can't make this up. Maybe he has to just... get his food delivered from the store now. I don't. You are uh, no he, longer... can't, he can't carry his eggs home. Mother, can you go grab some eggs for me? You know I can't grab them myself. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I wow. thought that was strange. That's just the way the news goes. Wow. Spanking. Now, Spanking. <laughs> if someone was to throw eggs at Emperor Palpatine, what would the punishment be? <laughs> Unlimited. Fried eggs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put him in the stocks. I, I like all these creative answers. I, I it's by a chicken if you want to spanking in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought that was just the most ridiculous story. Yeah, it was I great. Not, I didn't even hear that. There Same punishment. 
to save my legs. Henceforth, yes. <laughs> you may not carry eggs anywhere in the galaxy. <laughs> Can't hold eggs in public. <laughs> All right, ban of eggs. <laughs> that was a nice, deep, bassy tone. I like that. That was very nice. Ah. Okay, well, let's get back to the conversation. Uh, talking about acting. So, which of the two did you like more uh, between the two speeches, the Kino Loy speech or the Luthen Rail speech? I know they're I, they're I thought, different. I thought Kino was good. I thought the Luthen hit me harder. I, I thought even I know in the, some of the chats online uh, on your video uh, review, people were saying it was kind of contrived and he was trying to manipulate him. Great. Then he was even a great actor acting yeah. as mm -hmm. an actor. And so yeah. even better. Uh, but I think that to me, that one was uh, was above the other one. And I don't know who the uh, the rebel is in there. Um, I've never seen him in any other things as an actor. Uh, but I, I get the sense that he elevated his own uh acting in that scene based on what he was being fed because mm -hmm. they yeah, were both he, great he, he was a supporting they role both great he he didn't really do anything but he played it really really well and and it humanized him as well it, him having a brand new baby yeah. he wants out he said he can't mm -hmm. do this anymore but he was the tool that luthan or or uh, stellan was using in that scene to put on the performance He's and, like, and anywhere right that's so bad yeah it it, it played off they there's played off each other him. very well yeah, yeah they, there's, there's that that whole scene was played out just amazing the way that his his reaction just standing there in the elevator to what luthan is saying to him um i i think that speech was phenomenal but i'm actually on the other side of the fence on this one kino's speech is the one that hit me harder and not not to take away anything from luthan's speech i just i don't know that whole scene with Kino because he quickly became I think he actually is hands down my favorite character so far in this mm -hmm. series yeah I, I'll, I'll be the tiebreaker I, I gotta give it to the Kino speech that that would well, I knew that you were gonna do that. You put a whole video on that. I know, so. I know, I know. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll do another video on um, on the Luthan speech, um, but from a different angle. That one, because if you if you saw that video, you you know what I'm going to talk about. It put us in the position of these inmates. Oh yeah, I, I thought and, it was great. And I, I watched it three times. I saw some people online complaining, like, "Oh, why are we wasting so much time stuck in this prison?" That's why. Because we were stuck in that prison alongside these people. There's a whole, we almost felt like we were missing out that FOMO that they talk about. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a whole nother, you know, the rebellion starting out there. Why can't we get out there? If we want to see what's going on out there. That's exactly what the other inmates were feeling, except they had been in there months, years, decades, mm -hmm. maybe. We don't know how long they've been in there. And so that, that speech was, especially when the camera panned and, and he was looking directly into the camera. He's speaking to us because we can empathize with all those inmates. We can put I didn't notice that until you, until you said it in your video. Yeah. Like, that's, that's, they did change that's that angle. What, that's cool. That's what hit me while I was watching that because I was thinking about it from the perspective of like, why do I feel so attached to these characters? It's not because we got to know any of them. We know maybe three of their names. We, we know their different faces, why do we feel so attached with them? It's it's the brotherhood that I talked about in that video that we have with them and they have with each other, all in the same situation. They're they're fellows of circumstance. Can you put up uh, Cobra Disney's comment there at the end? So he's he's a customer service rep. See, I don't agree with that. What mm -hmm. I think is he's he's a puppet master. He is a master mm -hmm. puppeteer, and he's making people do what he wants them to do. I don't think he's just a customer service rep, and, and he's not afraid. He pulling all uh, the levers behind the scenes. He's not afraid to do what has to be done. No, he not he doesn't he, think twice. He takes no joy in anything he mm. does. He does it because it's the logical thing to do to for the advancement of the rebellion. Just like he said in that um which was a really really cool component of his his monologue was when he told him in the elevator like you're it's That's just 50 puppets. men. There you go. You're worth more than that. You're worth more than those 50 men. And so I actually thought of um you remember the imitation game? Yeah, I knew I was thinking that exact same thing as soon as I saw that scene. I was yep. thinking the exact same thing. It's there, like my brother's be... on the boat and if they're gonna kill him. Yeah, we yep. can't tell yep. anybody because you know, best time or worst time to lie to someone is when they're expecting it. So Yep. That is exactly what I thought 
while I watched that. I that said, that's the, the imitation thing. game. Yep. It's, it's really cool because it's so true. If they figure out that we have the inside information on when these attacks are going to happen and we can, and we avoid them, they'll know that we have an inside man and they won't yep. stop until they find it. Yep. So that's and why he said you're worth more than sub, 50 you know, men. Covert and you won't get any more information out of them. So. Yeah. Yep. And so a couple of the comments I, I mentioned or I, I read were mentioning how that speech from Luthen was a placeholder for the rebellion in general. All of it is sacrifice. All of it is we are, are nothing, but we're doing this for the future generations for the, for the goodness of the galaxy at large that we might never even get to see. That was the whole crux of his speech, but it was, it was a stand in for the entire rebellion. And I think that as a, as a boiled down thesis of what does star Wars mean, just as rogue one was an example of here's the war aspect of it. This is what is, what the cost of that rebellion is put into a two minute speech. And I also really liked how it wasn't a forced monologue. I've seen monologues in movies and, and shows before where it's just the bad guy or the good guy rambling for two minutes. This yeah. was out of necessity. There was no reason for Lonnie to respond because what, what do you say to that? It, you ask, what is, what is your sacrifice? Like, what are you putting into this? And he's he so you stupefied away. <laughs> by his response because at that moment he's thinking like, you're, you're just sitting back there in your art shop pulling the strings like what do you what have you sacrificed and there's such a, an overwhelming response that, that he can't even open his mouth and he just sends him away click yeah it was <laughs> that was that was seriously the best yeah there was something mrs corban said in one of the videos that was pretty good i cannot remember what it was i'll have to go back and watch it but there's something i was oscar Good to see you. Trying to remember. Um, speaking of Oscar, I think this is one of the good. names. Um, and I might have forgotten the extra special shout out from last week. Um, yeah, but yeah. if you got the secret code word this week, um, here's your extra special shout out. Uh, so the people that caught the extra special code word, everything is extra super special is Daniel Hammersley, Aussie Star Wars nerd, uh, Neck Badesh. I don't know why I put Neck. Charlie, Cobra Disney Jedi, Aiden S, Don, Noel Vargas, Israel Garcia, Jet Blast 190, KG, or is it KG? I've heard it both ways. Oscar Castrayan. Is it Castrayan or Castrellan? Kirk S, Midwest River Rat, Trekker 1710E, Darth Maximus, and AVI AKI Dos Lobitos. So there's your extra special shout out. Here is a sip for you. <laughs> hey, thank you for paying attention and catching that special code word. Thanks to all of you guys. Um, let's see. Tom says Kina was more emotional and immersive while Luthen was a fascinating reveal and organic. This is the hidden father of the rebellion speaking to the need to absorb evil to defeat it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, th I think that's exactly right. Um, there was more. Um, oh, where's night my bot. nightbot? Nightbot. <laughs> where's my nightbot? Double L. All right. The y. Casta Cast Leon. Yeah, that sounded good. I'll leave it at that. That sounded really good. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, oh let me Cast try this. Hold on. I'm going to test out nightbot real quick. Oh, boy. Is it gonna do it? It's hammering Matt Cave. <laughs> <laughs> you're sending the bots to me? No, I'm trying to post your link. <laughs> you sounded like you're quick. <laughs> it calls to you. Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't figure out Nightbot. I keep setting it up with these these things and giveaways, and maybe I need to give it permission to comment. Did but I've seen it Nightbot in the chat before. A mod. Yes, I've seen it in the chat before because it's mm -hmm. it's um, timed out people for emote uh, whatever. So uh, did I see it tonight? Of fact, Actually, no, I haven't seen Nightbot show up yet tonight. Do I have to turn on Nightbot? It should it's just be Nightbot. going. I have um, no idea. I never what? load up the site. Ah, you know what? I'll, I'll, we'll check it out later. I'll stream out. I, guys, I don't know what I'm doing. Really <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> As evident by the oh, uh, I, I was the shutting off camera every twenty minutes. <laughs> I was going to say something. Um, 
we didn't know it when we first watched episode four, right? Way back in the day. And what I don't know what her quote was, but many, many rebels have died to obtain this information or something the, like yeah, that. Yeah, the Bothans, I think it was. Oh, in Return we, of the Jedi. Yeah. We, we didn't have a clue on the gravity of what was behind that. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what was so amazing with when Rogue wow, One came out is because we saw what happened right before that. Yep. And and then it wasn't just, oh, they have a floppy disk and now the droids are on Tatooine. Like, what's going on? Cool. Yeah. Now it's like, <laughs> do you guys know what you have? Like R2, do you know what, what you have? That is the key to everything. Mm-hmm. And I think, as I said last week, we're going to look back years from now at Andor in the same light that we look at Rogue One now as instrumental to the formation of the rebellion, to setting all the pieces in place. Luke is not going to blow up the Death Star without this show. This show is setting up Rogue One and that and Rogue One is setting up where everything started back in 1977 or 76, depending on if they're doing the, uh, the book or the movie, whatever. Mm-hmm. doesn't matter. Um, let me get you guys talk about something. Let me get Matt Cave's link. I get the link. <laughs> so, um, in honor of your video game channel, I wear my Overwatch shirt. There we nice. Go. It's not a retro game yet. Well, well, actually, Overwatch One is a retro game. Listen, one day oh, your game, your games will, will be, be retro, retro too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Overwatch One is retro now because they don't. You can't play it anymore. All servers were dismissed. Mm-hmm. Bye bye. Speaking Overwatch of games one. and yeah. and the world of uh-huh. Star Wars. Did you guys hear that uh, Jedi Outcast is coming to virtual reality? Wow! They're virtual reality Star the, Wars is wild. Is it the quest or whatever? So now you get you get to be Kyle Katarn in VR and play Jedi Outcast. That's cool. You played that one not too long ago, didn't you? Yeah, I was playing that a little while back, and now I'm like, man. Do I need to get a quest? (laughs) All right. So here's what I want all of you guys in chat to do. There are 31 of you watching currently. Matt Cave. This guy. That guy (laughs) is only 20 subscribers away from hitting 500. So if there are any of you watching out of the 31 people watching in here right now, if any of you guys have not subscribed to him and you even like video games at all or you've ever played a video game do me a favor and subscribe (laughs) to his channel i'm putting it in the chat right now uh and so if you can subscribe to his channel let's see if we can get him up to 500 tonight we'll see if we can do that i don't want to skip out on trekker 1710 ease there did you see that one yeah go ahead i didn't think of that but he better watch his back <laughs> he is now put himself out there that he does not want to participate. And that is not going to go well for a rebellion that needs to be tight and focused and moving forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you, you can't have any comes... leaks, especially with the mole that high up. Nope. Yeah. He's at the top with Dedra. That's, I, I didn't think of that, but yeah, he better watch his back. Yeah, that's going to be... Actually, speaking of her, you know, we we took a little bit of a break from... Um... Speaking of characters being in trouble with somebody watching their back, uh, Vel, we kind of lost track of a little bit. You know, she showed up all dressed mm-hmm. up and nice and everything. And is she off to... playing rich girl? Yeah, but is she actually a threat? Like, that's the thing. We still have to worry about what she's going to do to Andor, to Cassie. Yeah. See, th- yeah, I that's love... still out there, too. <laughs> Here, here's another aspect that I just thought about. There are so many loose ends, but they don't feel like loose ends. Mm-hmm. Any other show with this many question marks left with only two episodes left. We were talking about this with Book of Boba Fett. There are so many loose ends. How are they going to tie all this up? But with this show, I don't even feel like they that doesn't bother me. need to tie up those no. things. Because the galaxy is so expansive in this show, everyone's doing different things. We know it's all going to come together eventually. But as of right now, it's it's little little earthquakes and murmurings and whispers in in the dark corners happening all across the the galaxy it doesn't matter so even if we never see vel for the rest of the season i don't think it'll bother me so she's out there we got the money what's the deal with the money we got the money we've got the um 
We've got the uh, the banker guy, Tay Colma. We've got the Davos Golden guy, the, the finance Gear guy. We've got Grandma Marva. Yeah. Um, with there's a lot of loose ends, but they don't feel like that. Yeah, and no. even Mom Mothma's husband. He's out there know, somewhere. He, he plays he, the way I don't know the actor's name, but I love the way he's playing the role because he's mm -hmm. so he's so playing out of touch that I feel like he's suddenly going to be Involved. either a problem or a huge benefit. I I feel like he could swing either way. But given how we know Mon Mothma later uh, in Return of the Jedi, especially, I don't think he's in the picture anymore. So what happened with him? What happens with their daughter? Mm -hmm. I mean, where's the Rebel Manifesto? If they follow married. up on one yes. thing, I want to know the uh, the Rebel Manifesto. And I said this when we got introduced to the Manifesto. I want Disney to release this Rebel Manifesto from Nemec as a book. That would be cool. for us to buy <laughs> just so we can get it. The, the market for that is so small, character. though. I know it'll never happen. Yeah, but but they also have the bounty hunter code, which I have. Oh, that's true. They have the Sith handbook and they've got the, the Jedi handbook. Yep. So the people that want to know the, the details about this world and, and make it feel more real, they'll they'll buy into that stuff. It doesn't have to be a bestseller. Or maybe I could just write my own manifesto in Nemec's words mm. uh, as like fan fiction kind of. That might be cool to to look at. So, um, yeah, everyone keeps up into Matt Cave. We're get, we're getting them closer to five hundred. Let's get them up over five hundred tonight. <laughs> My goodness, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. I want you, you gonna, to hit that. I want you to hit you, that number. You're gonna make me do Wookie growls and also cry on the same. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, Maybe let's just join uh, this because we got more people in here now. Welcome. You missed the beginning. Hello? Go back and watch it. It was pretty funny. And people uh, just tuning in saw that happen. <laughs> yeah, you just turned in and saw that. And if know. you did turn in and you don't know what Chuck Eggs means, to go back. <laughs> the Chuck Eggs. Let's see. Chilling in the basement. Here is a sip for you. Chilling in the basement. What's up, dude? Awesome name. Cool uh, profile picture. Really good channel I like it too. By the way, I, I just like to throw a little prop out to him as well. I really enjoy. He got a channel, dude. Is like so straightforward and talking nerdy stuff. I love it. Chilling in the basement's got a channel. Mm -hmm. Let me search real quick. Chilling in the I like how he just tells it as it is. <laughs> All right. Well, consider me subscribed. I look forward to checking out your stuff. Sweet. Um, you you got to expand on nerdy. Oh, everything from Marvel to Star Wars to whatever. It, it's just, he's like, here's what I'm thinking about. And he's just literally chilling in the basement. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Well, let's take another little break in the conversation. And uh, let's talk about some news from the stars. From the farthest corners of the galaxy and every channel in the holonet, we bring you news from the stars. So Yay. apparently, a popular Disneyland ride is doomed. Oh, no. That was the, the title I saw. And I was a little intrigued. And so I was uh, thinking about what's going on after reading the article. I, uh, I don't feel very informed, but we're going to get into it. So this comes to us by uh, Beyond the Magic, I think. I don't know. It's whatever like Google recommends. Popular Disney World ride doomed, left in bad shape. And then it saw the, I saw the picture of the Millennium Falcon, and so I thought... I know, I was like, uh-oh. What is oh. going on here? That's the hook. And so uh, I clicked, and uh, this is what oh, I are found. Are we supposed to guess? Hold oh, <laughs> oh, no. Okay, well, I was just kidding. <laughs> in Galaxy's Edge, you can enjoy many fun Star Wars-themed experiences, including two world-class attractions in Millennium Falcon, Smuggler's Run, and Star Wars, Rise of the Resistance. Okay, so which of those two is doomed? 
seems a little harsh in, in is terms it of one of those two language. It's one of those two. I don't like this already. Oh, no, I, they're both good. I feel like the I would Falcon say Smuggler's Run probably in danger because Rise of the Resistance would have more of the Disney side of the push. Rise but of the well, Resistance is an insanely good ride. Let's experience. Read the it's next not a ride; page. it's an experience. Yeah. However. It seems many Disney Park guests have noticed the attraction has been having its fair share of malfunctions, including breakdowns and evacuations over the last year. Uh, many fans have said that the ride is doomed to end up in B mode forever. I don't know that they mentioned, but it's Rise of the Resistance. Oh, no. Yeah. And this is Disney World. So, Father Time, I don't think you have anything to worry about. All right. Um, but. Uh, it sucks because if you've seen A mode once, getting stuck in B mode is so underwhelming, one guest said in a social media thread. Like there was no way for them to spice it up at all. Kylo using the force doesn't even feel as immersive as A mode. One guest said they noticed that there are many areas of the ride that don't seem to be working. So apparently it's on B mode. <laughs> What in the I world? I was trying to read it closer. I was a little oh. far. <laughs> <laughs> now you're out of focus. Uh... You better take back that camera. He's turning oh into a force ghost in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's so bad. Damn, oh, we're doomed. Another Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> is it really stuck in like? Ghost you, you killed it. You killed it. You killed yourself. <laughs> this is just okay. how you stream now. <laughs> Oh, is like an you're, you're, no, you're doomed. Watch this. So, Hold on. I don't know what. I haven't done any of these experiences. I haven't been to Galaxy. Is it coming back? Oh, it's back. Oh, there we it's, go. It's, there we it's go. figuring it out. Okay. So <laughs> I'm assuming like some rides have like a more intense version while with a less intense. Is that what this is? I have no idea. All I know is that this ride is a, supposedly stuck in B mode. And they finish yeah. off the article by saying, I've seen it in both A and B modes. And do I remember correctly that the ride vehicle still does the little stop and go jukes as if the cannons are firing and moving lol? They really need to stop cheaping out on repairs. So make of that what you will, but apparently the ride is stuck on B mode. And apparently people don't like B mode. Apparently people don't like B mode. Um, I wouldn't know if I was on A or B. It's an, It's amazing. Apparently, Either there's way, parts of it yeah. that aren't working, which is a problem What, no matter what mode you're in. It sounds more <laughs> like C mode. Um, not that I've ever been on the ride, but that's just the news from the stars. From the farthest corners of the galaxy and every channel in the Holonet, we bring you news from the stars. Hmm. There you go. And Cobra said Rise was broke down half the time I was at Disneyland, and I loved Smugglers better. Ah, Ooh. that's right. Kobe, he went, he went recently. Um, uh, no idea what mode I was on. It was great. Yeah. Uh, Chilling in the basement says I subscribe to this channel. Who is who up there? Um, <laughs> I forgot that I had turned off. Names. Turn it on. There we go. Oh, Thank hey. you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to introduce us, we got a lot of people in here. Uh, to introduce us again, this is the Matt Cave. If you like uh, retro gaming or gaming in general, um, that is your your <laughs> go-to place. Excellent channel. Please check him out. He is only a couple away from 500 subscribers, I believe. Let me refresh. I, I can't believe you even did. Dude, we're like, we're 11 away. That's insane. Yeah, we're so close. If there's 11 of you that can uh, find it in your heart to appreciate video games or video game history uh, or just nerd stuff he's got an excellent documentary about uh different uh star wars video game uh sequences like the battle of hoth and the death star trench run um putting his link in chat again i know there's 11 of you guys that can subscribe let's get him to 500 i really would love to do that before we end the night <laughs> um and then i'm coffee on corban this is my channel um so if you've seen any of my shorter videos the little two and three minute videos uh that's my voice uh this is my face um <laughs> this is the reason that there's a mustache on the mug in the logo. This is my face. <laughs> well, it is. This is not mine. This is one of those holograms. So. Yes, and then we've got Sour Man, the uh, the brown. <laughs> nice. Brown. I don't know. I don't that know. sounds so bad. <laughs> 
<laughs> Who wants to lick the batter? Oh, oh you guys are insane. lovely. Um, you got to start a channel. Yeah, I could. You should. Uh, but that's that's who's who. Um, so let's let's go on a little bit more for um, for this discussion of Andor. Um, so is this the best acting we've ever seen? We already touched on that. It's a different yes. caliber than with what we've gotten before. Um, is that is that what you're going? Simple answer, yes. Oh, I was trying to throw something in while you were getting through your monologue there. So. <laughs> I got, I got you. Well, my monologue was not nearly as good as the ones we've gotten this last episode. Um, but I'm going to check on that poll again, the one I mentioned at the top of the show. And we are going to see what we've got. Oh, All right, this we is are exciting. At, we are Status at 1.6 uh, thousand votes now, because uh, that was maybe about 30 minutes ago. Yeah, 30 mm -hmm. um, percent jump. Sequels are still at 1%. And again, the question for anyone in the chat that is curious, uh, what is the best Star Wars content of the Disney era? 1% said sequels. 14% still said Rogue One. 21% said Mandalorian. And 65% said Andor. I think it was at 67 at the top of the show. I may be wrong. But still 65%. No, 64 because we went down to 32. Remember my 50%. Okay. No, that was the other poll. Oh, that was the other pool. Yeah, the that was the pool. that was the other perfect one. Pool. That was that one. That was <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's that's where we're standing right now. Is of the respondents, sixty five percent said that Andor is their favorite um, or best. Did I call it best? What is the best Star Wars content of the Disney era? Which is still somewhat subjective, uh, but sixty five percent said Andor. I think this show is just doing so well, and I I haven't heard as much the people that were complaining about it not Let's being quieted down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It because there wasn't much for them to keep complaining about. Because you know what also I think helped it too was we got exactly that. Tales of the Jedi came out. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that filled the void that some fans were feeling. And Tales of the Jedi is absolutely fantastic. But it goes to show you how two different, very different styles can exist in this galaxy and not only exist together, but they're, they happen like at the same time. So there's, there's literally star Wars for everyone. And yeah. And, and that's, I, did you guys see the, uh, the Grogu short that came out a couple I days ago? Did. And I, I, I didn't check it yet. Felt, I, I, I don't, the animation looked cool, but I, I looked at, at my family. I was like, I don't think I'm intelligent enough to understand what I just watched. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know the creator was trying to tell me something, mm -hmm. but I missed it. it just... <laughs> yeah. Isaac says in Tales of the Jedi, it could have benefited from a weekly release schedule. I think what would have been cool is that they had two weeks. One was the Ahsoka one and one was the Dooku one. I like, yeah, I agree. Because because 15 minutes, which really, realistically, was only about 10, 11, 12 minutes of They're actual quick. screen time. They're quick. Um, all, if we got one a week of that drawn out over six weeks, that's that's not enough. That's not even close to enough. At least 25 minutes, I'd say, for a weekly release as a, as a minimum. And even that, some of the shorter Mandalorian episodes we got were, were pretty somewhat of a letdown uh, with that short of release. So I think if they had gone two releases of the Ahsoka arc and the Dooku arc, um, and a lot of other people have mentioned that they should have even had a um, Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan arc and a Dooku arc and left Ahsoka out of it. I think we've mentioned that before, or maybe I was on um, Echo Base Network talking about that, how we have Ahsoka fatigue uh, and they better not do any more Ahsoka until the Ahsoka show comes out. Otherwise, it's going to spoil that. Um, but I think you did bring up a good point in that Tales of the Jedi came at the right time to get the people that were not happy with Andor off of the scent uh, of Andor. They got off the complaint train and they they went over and said, OK, all right, we got something we appreciate. And then by the time they were done with that, Andor is already in episode eight, nine. Now we're ten. 
there's no sense in complaining about 10 episodes when you've only seen the first two. Yeah. So I, I think that did help people to binge watching at that point, because yes, uh, and Phil makes a good point. The viewership was down, but it actually is on the rise now. Um, and I think that's people who were waiting. They're like, I'm not going to just, I'm just going to wait and see what it is. Cause there yeah. are plenty of people who would prefer to just binge watch it as many episodes as they can in a row. And now the viewership is rising and that word of mouth is getting around. So mm -hmm. we're going to see this keep going up for quite some time. Well, to answer, to answer the question, how is it better? For me, it is. I'm not going to tell mm -hmm. someone else, this is the best Star Wars. You, you've got to like this better than the other ones. We'll go back to the mm -hmm. surfboards, longboards, shortboards. There's something for everybody, and I can appreciate yeah. them both. Mm -hmm. So for me, and, this and, is better. And I think that this show does have, as, as Chillin' in the Basement says, um, change the Star Wars label, uh, Rebellion to the Insurgency, just take out the Star Wars-y little bits and pieces, and it's a generic show. Granted, a really good generic show, yeah. but I think that does help to bring in new audiences. My my sister in law is a very casual Star Wars fan. I think I mentioned this last week. Uh, very casual Star Wars fan watched one episode, the one where Ulaf dies, and just based off of uh, you know the emotional connection to Ulaf and what's going on in this prison, I remember this Cassian guy from Rogue One. She went back and then and watched all the way up through, and now she's caught up. She's invested in it. And I think a lot of people that are interested in a good show, you don't have to have Star Wars knowledge to enjoy this show. It helps. Yeah. It, it, it brings helps. a lot of enjoyment. But I think there's, there's new audiences that are going to be brought into this by, like you were saying, the word of mouth after we get towards the end of the season in like, Hey, this show's almost done. You can watch all the way through Make sure you watch at least episodes one, two, and three before you make your decision. Um, which again, I'm glad they released one, two, and three all at the same time. Um, yeah. but I think the word of mouth is going to get around like, Hey, I know you don't like star Wars, but trust me, this isn't like puppets and, and space wizards. This is like legitimate it's a good it's a great show with fantastic acting and that's well, i'm looking at drone master's people. comment there it's been waiting for a dark and gritty star wars for years and I, it just popped into my head what's the best part of episode three because it's dark the, yeah and, and yeah, no the, which scene is the best the immolation scene there you go right yeah. why because it's dark and gritty great dialogue great acting and yep. that makes the movie and so i think we're getting that again here I think Andor should have been about a new character. They can still keep everything the same, just have a new character that we can worry about because we don't know if he's going to live or die. But the thing, I, I, I get it. I get that criticism. I've heard it a lot, seen it in a lot of comments. My rebuttal to that is Andor is one piece in this story. And that also goes back to the marketing fail of calling this Andor, essentially mm -hmm. the Cassian Andor show, to where people are going to say, why do I want to care about that? Because I know he's not going to die, but he's one piece. Did we know that Ulaf was going to die? Did we know Nemec was going to die? Did we know Cassian was going to kill Skeen? What happens to Luthen? Like all these other characters that are arguably more important than Andor himself at this point, they could die at any moment as we've seen. And so I do think the emphasis being on Cassian takes away from that a little bit and I, I do think that there was a bit of a marketing issue and a labeling issue with this show but yeah all the eggs aren't in the basket of cassie and andor of course he lives but it's just yeah. is it me or am i not hearing anyone call this star wars andor it's just <laughs> called andor i mean yeah. so is, are they trying to distance themselves saying hey we're Star Wars, and you know people will know no, it. I don't but... think so because they called the Mandalorian the Mandalorian, and I heard some of the same complaints about like, oh, this is this isn't Star Wars. Where the Jedi? Where the where's the Force? It's this show. I mean, I love the show. It's, it's different, and the, we need to be okay with it being different. I'm already yeah, okay with that. The title though is one of those things that's one of my pet peeves when it comes to movies and shows from the last say 10 to 15 years um they fell into this weird thing where stuff just got just started being titled the character's name um take one of my favorite film franchises of all time rocky why couldn't rocky balboa just been called rocky six we had 
one, two, three, four, five. And then we're just called Rocky Balboa. And, I, and that always threw me up. And I love that film, by the way. That's one of my favorite films. But I'm like, why is it called that? And then we got a whole bunch of other things start coming out that way. We just name it after the character. To me, it feels lazy. Because this show mm-hmm. could have been called anything. I saw in the chat, somebody said, call it The Reckoning. Call it call it rebellion yeah, star wars reckoning Star Wars reckoning that would be fantastic and it, still have yeah. casting and andor in it like do and exactly what I they're do doing see, yeah same show just call it different market yeah. it different mm-hmm. because because to a lot of people it's the cassie and andor show that one guy from rogue one that i didn't care about show yeah but that's the thing and, and, and that's it what really isn't though and, and we were we've been talking about this for over a year you and mm-hmm. i um People said like, oh, why do we want a whole show about Cassie and Andor? And we said over a year ago, it's not about that. It's mm-hmm. about the formation of the rebellion, which we don't know about yet. We we know we knew it was going to be about something very important. It was just Cassie and, and that's the irony. The this whole character. this whole series is about the formation of the rebellion. It's called Andor, and he doesn't even want to be part of a rebellion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yep, it's going to catapult him in. He's going to be thrown into the rebellion as we get thrown into season two. He's and not then taking. We're a, see, I don't see him taking a leadership position on anything yet. Not yet. Not yet. Something's going to happen in these last two episodes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. uh, Diego Luna mentioned in an interview that Andor was about a community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's not just about him. It, it's about the every man it's about the everyday citizen who has nothing to do with the wars that are going on like it's just people living their lives and it's the story of how they get pushed or thrown into the mix cassian didn't want to be a part of this but we know he ends up being a major part of this but it he's resistant to it and most of the people going around some people are like, no, the Empire is doing their job. They're keeping us safe. They're keeping order. They're doing this, that, and the other thing. Other people are like the rebels are fighting for us, and they're seeing things that we're not seeing. But most of the people, most of the population are completely oblivious to all of it. But every yep. once in a while, one of them gets shoved into the middle. And now all of a sudden, they have to pick a side. They have to decide, am I part of this rebellion or am i going to stick with the empire they realize there's actually sides to choose whether they want mm-hmm. it or not and i think that's the real core of the story it, this right. is the story for the every man and, and that's what isaac says here is he was already part of the rebellion in some form uh bix pack and cassian were their own little rebel cell mm-hmm. but there's no cohesion with the other factions scattered across the galaxy uh which is luthan's entire point is we need the empire to do terrible things so people are motivated to to band together otherwise they never will they'll become what what was that line he said a few episodes ago was brilliant something along the lines of people are going to get uh complacent and those generations are going to die off Mm -hmm. and then the next generation will know nothing different and so there will be no reason to change it's now or never we need the empire we need to force their hand you know which is when she says you know people will suffer that's the plan yeah even think about kanan in rebels how resistant he was to join up with the rebellion he's like he was talking to harry he's like we got our own thing going on here we're fine we don't need this and they become part of a what was a blue squadron and all that but he was resistant to it yep all right, I'm going to make this appeal real quick before we play our game. We are 10 subscribers away from getting this guy to 500. <laughs> there are quite a few of you guys in here. If you have not subscribed to him already and you have ever played a video game before. <laughs> if you've ever subscribe. played a video game before. Wow. That's... Yeah, I'm casting a wide net. <laughs> I appreciate it, my friend. <laughs> um, yeah, Trekker makes a good point. Uh, Cassian isn't a leader. He's a support king. He's the king of support. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling that where we see him in Rogue One, very cynical, scarred by by the things he's done in war, we're going to see that shift in season two. We're going to see how he goes from 
all right, let's get it. Let's let's do this rebellion thing. And then all the situations make him very, like I said, cynical, scarred, beaten, battle-worn to where we see him in Rogue One. And that's going to make the whole dynamic between him and Jyn Erso so much more powerful when she kind of brings him back to the light, so to speak. And yeah, he's going to go off and game. pop off Erso, and he mm. backs off. That now, now we know that yep. wouldn't be like him knowing where he's going. Right. And so that's what I'm looking forward to in season two in seeing how does he go from, you know, let's let's do this rebellion thing. Maybe it's because he's spent too much time under Luthen and he gets that same mindset of it doesn't matter what we do. We have to do the hard things because, because no one else will. And I and that's going to really supplement Rogue One and make that more emotional, especially. Oh, I just realized this. The death of Andor was already emotional enough. How mm -hmm. much more after we've spent two seasons with him? Yeah. Yes. That's gonna I'm be... actually purposely holding off rewatching Rogue One until I know. we get I season too. two. <laughs> yep. The whole oh, rebellion is Machiavellian. It's pretty funny. <laughs> All right. So it is time to play uh, the, uh, the the Star Wars blackmail game. Um, oh, white, no. Whites can play it too. My mic's cutting. <laughs> um, <laughs> you guys know what this game is. It is Quark yeah. Swap. So the way this game is played, oh. if anyone watching in chat um, has not seen this before, um, there's going to be a quote brought up on screen. For example, our first one is why you stuck up half-witted scruffy looking nerve herder. And you have to say that quote in the voice of whichever character you land on with this wheel of names. Let me get that pulled up real quick. Oh, no. <laughs> Same names oh, as last time because I couldn't <laughs> think of any others to add. Those are our names. It's going to be there it Jar Jar is. every Those time. Are our names. <laughs> every single time it's Jar Jar. Oh, um, so we, we go. got nine of these in here, I believe. So we all get to go three different times. Uh, and Damn you guys bad. can give a... <laughs> What are these games? Yeah, you guys can give a rating out. Uh, oh, R two D two. I should R2 add that. R two D two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Let me let me add that. No, no worse than Chewbacca. <laughs> yeah, we know how that ended. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. I think C three PO is in okay. there. Isn't he? Oh my! <laughs> no, you, you're going to land I'll, on I'm it. it. C three PO. All I right. wish I could see three people have been added. Voice. I love that voice. Uh, all right. So who's going first? Oh, gosh. I'll get it out. You, got, you guys in chat can rate uh, one through 10 how our, uh, our impressions go. Oh, this is not good. <laughs> so, like, after Matt Cave goes, because he's going first, uh, uh, just oh, put okay, Matt okay, Cave going first, then. <laughs> Matt Cave 7 or whatever. All right. So the first one, as I said earlier, is why you stuck up half-witted, scruffy-looking nerf herder. That's your quote. Uh, let me bring up the wheel. Wheel of death. And your, what is it called? Yeah, the wheel of, wheel of death. Anybody uh, else? Wheel, wheel of embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> Chewbacca's got all his case... Out of order. Watto. Oh, we oh. were waiting for Watto last time. We never got him. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Why you stuck up, half witted, scruffy looking nerf herder? <laughs> I'll give terrible. that a, a seven and a half. A seven and a half. That's pretty like, good. God, that was seven. pretty good. I like that. That was very nice. All right. Uh, Jedi Let's mind see. Don't work. <laughs> Am I next? Anubian. Am I next? Anubian. Is that how it's doing it? It is the weapon of a Jedi Knight, 
not as clumsy or random as a blaster. An elegant weapon for a more civilized age. I was already doing old Ben. You were. <laughs> you got to do it yes. the right way. Oh, maybe that's the game. You got to do it the right way and then switch to the voice. Oh, yeah. You have to say next the correct time. one next and time. then yeah. the name. Yeah, we'll do that next Ooh. time. All right. So I'm saying that line in the style of Yoda. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Christopher Walken. <laughs> uh, a weapon of the Jedi Knight, it is. Not as clumsy or random as a blaster. An elegant weapon for a civilized age. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's terrible. I like it. That yeah, was like a, a leprechaun. Long Wars Yoda going there. It fell off. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right. Oh, they were giving you eights and nines, Matt Cave. Wow. <laughs> wow. All right. Father Time, your quote oh, is. No. Oh, no. Vader was seduced by the dark side of the force. He betrayed and murdered your father. Not possible. No. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Watto. Oh, goodness. Your Watto is going to be so much better up. than mine. Oh, Vader was seduced by the dark side of the Force. He betrayed your father, murdered, betrayed and murdered your father. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. This is hard. <laughs> this is hard. All of I you like people it. at home, you that should be really trying good. it. You try. That I know really the good. people that are, are actually watching right now are trying it on their own, and they're like, I could do better than that. Oh yeah, I, yeah. Look, you everybody know, can so do it. Irish, I know. That's what I was doing. That's what, I wasn't trying. That's how it came out. It's so sick. Don't take a six. Learned, it's so hard. It is hard. Learned All right, the internet is forever. What do you mean? Yeah, that's the I'm whole saying. point of the game. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean forever? <laughs> when you say now, when you say forever, are you? What do you? All right, I don't care what universe you're from. That's gotta hurt. <laughs> Matt Cave, this is yours. Oh boy! Can we choose to do it in the original voice, or because I'm hearing that voice in my head? Yeah. Dooku. Oh boy! I had Dooku last time. <clears throat> <laughs> I don't care what universe you're from. That's gotta hurt. That was terrible. <laughs> that was actually pretty good. I don't know if it was. I wasn't Dooku, ready for it. it. I went good. fast. Yeah. All right, let's see. I'm saying fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. And I'm saying that in a voice. Yoda. Yoda, you're going to get. I know. It's coming around. Bro. It's, it's coming. <laughs> oh, well, there Rigged. you go. It's rigged. <laughs> uh, Fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. <laughs> that Scooby See, well, that's the voice I heard in my head. If you get the real one, it's easier. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Swap thing is... That was good. Yeah, I didn't even swap it. All right, let's 50. see. You got a 50 on that. Father Time, I'm a Mandalorian. Weapons are part of my religion. Let's do it. Let's do it. Mm. Saw Guerrera. Oh, yeah. The weapons are part of his religion, but he's not a Mandalorian. I'm just talking like an old man. Weapons are part of my religion? <laughs> Is that a question? <laughs> You've come to kill me? That's all I can hear. <laughs> yes. It calls to you. Borgullet. Borgullet. <laughs> it calls to you. This game all right. is rough. 
Uh, last round. How are you guys enjoying oh. this in chat? Nice. Negative 50. Sir King James said negative 50. Nice. <laughs> nice. Deceit. Every day more lies. <laughs> All right. Uh, you were the chosen one. It was said that you would destroy the Sith, not join them. Bring balance to the Force and not leave it in darkness. Matt Cave, this is yours. Oh, boy, this is me. That's a long one. That's a long one. Jar Jar. No, no, no. no. I'm removing Watto. <laughs> uh... Oh, we're spinning again. Yeah, we're going again. We're not doing you Watto again. Anakin. <laughs> Pretty generic. <laughs> so this is Anakin saying it to O. Yeah. Yes. Oh, reversal. I was the chosen one. It was said that I would destroy the Sith, not join them. Bring balance to the Force, not leave it in darkness. I I'm see a what you terrible did Anakin. <laughs> <laughs> that was so sassy. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> All right, my last one. Uh, I am more powerful than the Chancellor. I can overthrow him, and together you and I can rule the galaxy, make things the way we want them to be. And I'm saying that in the voice of... Old Ben. Old Ben. Oh, 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 oh Ben. Ha, ah, I got it. Oh, wow. Ben. All right. Roll I like reversal. Old ben. I like you, Old Ben. I am more powerful than the Chancellor. I could overthrow him. And together, you and I can rule the galaxy, make things the way we want them to be. Wow. That was great. Dude, that. That uh, right we there. should just I finish like it there because that was great. <laughs> that no, was awesome. you were last. You get an eleven. <laughs> oh, You're breaking my to... heart. Oh. You're going down a path I can't follow. All right, last one of the game, and you are doing it in the voice. It's of... not gonna be good. Oh <laughs> my gosh! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> You know, I'm definitely clipping this. <laughs> no, don't clip this. There you go. That's all I got. <laughs> oh, that was excellent. That was, great. <laughs> that was the best. Oh, no. That was brilliant. Oh, that Whose was recommendation was uh, oh, R2D2? Night. Let's go back in time here. And... Oh, no. <laughs> Jedi Hush. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm boy. sorry. Now Nightbot decides to join in. Jedi Hush, ignore Nightbot. Oh wow. Nightbot woke up. <laughs> Stop spamming. Yeah, that was that was fantastic. Um definitely clipping that, but it was really good. Um so this has been quotes. <laughs> Love the jamming tunes, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Royalty free. <laughs> All right. Oh. Just got a warning for that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why Nightbot decided to just just jump in there right now randomly. So we're gonna get into our closing thoughts, um, predictions, whatever else, in just a minute. This this put... series is hard to have predictions. By the way, mm. I could just say that. Yes, and and that goes back to kind of what I was saying earlier about the loose ends, in where it's just it's it's less like we're being presented a a story and like a production, and more of we're just kind of looking into these events, mm -hmm. which is what Star Wars should be. These these events mm -hmm. have already taken place, and we're just recounting them. It's it's a retelling of these stories that have been around for you know thousands of years. And that's really what this show is. We're getting an inside look at a little segment in time that is very important to, again, the formation of the rebellion. Um, so the loose ends don't bother me as much because there, there can be time to explore that in the future. Yeah. So. I, I think they have plans already in place. I think season two is probably at a very deep point in the writing already. Uh, they know where they're going with this. And 
if there's one thing I think Disney has learned, it's that they have to have a plan. And mm -hmm. they're implementing. I mean, there's the stuff we're getting. It's good stuff. Hello. I don't think I've seen you here before, Ethan. Um, here's Ziprio. Uh, I know we've got a lot of new people um, to the channel uh, oh, recently. Got so. Over 40 people watching right now. That's, That's exciting. Awesome. Yeah, we got a good, good crowd. Oh, bro. Okay. Well, then, this is the first time I've seen you on the YouTube side of things. <laughs> um, he's always very active in Discord. Um, speaking of, if any of you guys want to join the Discord uh, to carry on the conversations uh, that we have in the, the comments section, um, that link is in the description. Feel free to join in there. Um, as long as we keep it appropriate, uh, we got a bunch of different channels for different interests in there, like Discord servers should have. Um, yeah, we, we always have some great discussions in there. So... Uh, less about the um, predictions for the finale, because I'm assuming it's a two-part finale that we're getting. I'm just I'm just going to assume that because it doesn't seem like there's going to be enough time for like a setup episode and then a finale, unless we have like an hour and a half finale. Um, but I think we're going to have part one and two in these next two weeks. Um, but anything you guys are hoping gets resolved by the end of it, a any personal loose ends that you guys want to see followed up on. I want, I'm hoping for at least one more recognizable uh, character from Rogue One to enter the fray. Now, Ooh, I like that. I, I, I think everyone's waiting on K2SO, but I don't think we're going to see him season, until two. season two. Uh, but I would love to see someone from the Yavin base. Mm -hmm. Someone we recognize from Rogue One already deep into the rebellion. And maybe they have something, maybe there's something they say to Cassian that really changes his mind about which direction he's going. We go. need to see, I will say, we need to see why he stays with the rebellion. Because mm -hmm. as of right now, it seems like he would just, just kind of go off and, and survive. He doesn't seem to have the motivation to be a rebel, to actually fight against the Empire. So I think we do need to see that before the end of the second or before the end of this first season. We need to yeah. see why. Ooh, Cobra Disney Jedi and Dale uh, calling for a live mm -hmm. action Hera. That would be great. That would satisfy the people that are calling for aliens mm -hmm. as well. Yep. A lot of people have been complaining about that. I'm hoping to see another interaction face to face between Luthen and uh, Andor. Now yes. that he's gone off and done his thing, I want to see what his reaction is when they meet face to face. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, yeah, cheer it. Uh, that would be nice. <laughs> uh, I think whoever they bring in, they're going to do it tastefully. They they know what they're doing by this point. And I, I said last week a lot of the cautious optimism that I had going into the show, and th this is kind of the show that I you know put all my eggs in this show if it wasn't good i was going to be really disappointed um and it has not disappointed thus far um so I, I, that that caution that i had going into the show of like ah, i don't know if i can really like be emotionally invested in this that's that's gone by now i i know they tr i trust them they know what they're doing they're handling the star wars galaxy i have paper on me <laughs> in in the right way they're they're respecting the original lore because this is the foundation for the original lore. This is this is the right proper thing to do with a prequel. Is you you add to the story by making the stuff that we got before more important. That's what Rogue One did. Is it made the the floppy disk of the Death Star plans that much more valuable to us as the audience because we saw what had to take place for them to get that. Andor's doing the same exact thing. And so whatever we get in these last two episodes, and whatever we get in the second season, I'm confident that it's going to, to fulfill that same role. It's going to have a purpose for being there. Um, Tarkin, I would love to see Tarkin. Yeah, I was going to say something. that I We got Tarkin conversation. Yeah. Tarkin. But then the, then the good point, do you want a, a live action recast or do you want a CGI? Well, and, and I'll tell you what, the CGI did bug me when Olaf's little tray was floating through the floor. I didn't like that CGI at all. So if it was going to be that that bad, don't don't do it. Recast. I think if 
think about it this way. Like I still, I thought Tarkin looked great in Rogue One. I know it was slightly off, but I was like, whatever I'm seeing, I'm seeing him again. <laughs> and it was just very cool. But think about the difference and the quality change from the first time we saw Luke at the end of Mando season two to when we see him in Book of Boba Fett. Night and day. The night and day difference. And if they do Tarkin, that's what it's going to be. And it's going to look better. So I, I think yep. everyone would be pretty happy with the Tarkin we got if if we do get him. Yep, I, I completely agree. Um, the technology that they have is almost flawless now mm. to where it doesn't bother people as much. Yeah, if you have the budget, are they going to have the budget for Andor? To that's, do that what I was CGI? Just, that's what I was just going to say. I don't think this show has the budget for that because they've put so much into the actors and the set design and, and making the real parts of, of this show's production their main focus. Yep. So I don't think that they have the resources for this, at least this first season, to devote to CGI like that. So recast would probably be the way to go if they did bring in a Tarkin, which I'm open to seeing a new Tarkin. He's going to be five years younger than when we see him in A New Hope. Mm -hmm. The mannerisms are pretty um, easy for skilled actors to, to copy. I would say convincingly. I, I, it shouldn't be too hard to do. Uh, as long as the makeup looks correct, I, I, I think they can definitely pull it off, especially because we don't have... You? That's that's the guy <laughs> because we don't have um, we don't have all that much Tarkin in the original trilogy. We need or, back to on Tarkin now. Hope, yeah. <laughs> the, we do in the Tarkin book, which I still have to finish. You know what it is though? It's Tarkin being played originally played obviously by oh. Peter Cushing. Is he has such a distinct and recognizable face that I think a recast would actually be worse than doing the deep fake. You know, that's very possible. Technically, he already was recast. The actor that portrayed him in Rogue One wasn't even trying to do a Tarkin impression. He was doing his own performance and I thought he did a great job. I think he he harnessed what he needed to of that character and then also put a bit of his own into it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember that actor's name. And, uh, but if they were to have him again, reprise and use the deep fake te uh, tech that they have now, cause they got, <laughs> they got the guy from, you know, that Disney hired from YouTube um, doing the Luke stuff now. And he looked mm -hmm. fantastic. I mean, it looked like they used a time machine and pulled Mark Hamill out of that. I, I agree. But, um, my favorite thing about Luke CGI in Book of Boba Fett was they were able to modify Luke's face slightly mm -hmm. to make him look more like Anakin. There was a few mm -hmm. shots that were where um, specifically I'm thinking about where where Ahsoka said you have you you look so much like your father or something along those lines. You have so much mm -hmm. of your father in you, and he looks over at her with his with his head tilted to the side, and you see Anakin's face. And I know that they digitally changed it just a little bit from Mark <laughs> Hamill to Hayden Christensen, just a little bit in the eyes. And that, that really sold it for me. And so that's there's really cool stuff that they can do yeah. um, with the CGI. But again, is this the show where they want to use that? I honestly think that even if there's a little bit of us picking up on like, oh, they de-aged so-and-so or they CGI'd onto another actor, that's not the same vein of what this show is. Mm -hmm. We we haven't seen that before. We've seen the, the ultra realism. You can go there and touch the stuff. And I think that would take away from kind of the feeling of this show so far. Um, but it's I Tarkin. Need, I, need I just want to see Tarkin. Loose ends yeah. with Cyril. I need loose ends with uh, Andor's sister. Just tell me, is she dead? Great, we'll move on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is, he, is he still even trying to find her? Is, That's a good point. Yeah. Do you think this finale focuses on his sister? So and does she play a role in anything? Cassian is motivated motivated by love rather than rage. That, that's a great point. And someone said earlier, um, Sir King James, his guess was that the Empire kills his mom and Bix, and that's why he hates the Empire so much. I think he is tough enough 
to where hatred is not motivating enough of a factor for him to go full bore in the rebellion. Other characters are like that, but I don't think that alone would make him say, all right, I'm a rebel. I'm going to do everything I can to take the empire down. I don't think he's that kind of person. So I think it's more of the motivated by love. He has to, he has to be persuaded. And that's why I really hope that the manifesto comes back into play because I think reading that he will see like, this is why they're fighting. I, I, I'm going to join in this as well. And there, there also can be, you know, if his mom gets executed or something along those lines, that can definitely help. But I don't think pure rage is going to be enough to bring him into the, the fight. Yeah. So I really want a, a, a nice, at least direction of what Cyril's aiming to get out of life. Because we don't know. Yeah, we're so confused about Cyril. Yeah, he keeps popping in, and we get little bits, but I don't know his direction. I would just love to yeah. know at least which side is he on. <laughs> What's his... he Maybe he's on his own side, and we don't even let him tell us that. You know. And... <laughs> yeah, definitely. He he's getting a firsthand view of what the empire actually does, and that's what it does to humans. I can only imagine if we get a taste maybe in the, in the finale or in season two on what they're doing to other races. We already know what they do with the Wookiees. Yeah, the Empire. And, and the Ugnaughts as well. Mm -hmm. The Empire, they stick to only having humans for the most part. They yep. really don't deal with alien species and they they enslave them they do all kinds of horrible things that's why and i know a lot of people are like oh there's not enough aliens that we're seeing and and i will agree to a point like as we see out in the world when we're just in like a town or a city or whatever we should be seeing more which I, i've spotted some here and there but it's not it's not really full it doesn't bother um, me though it doesn't because i look at it like we're we're they're under imperial control and there's patrols going around all the time it, they're targets if they're out there in public, they're targets. Mm -hmm. So it's a risk. I mean, it's very similar, to, well, slightly similar to the Jedi being missing. You know, they can't be out there. Mm -hmm. They're a target. And um, the Empire... I, th I thought you were going to make a WW2 comparison. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so final final uh, poll, our poll watching uh, yes, little right. wrap up. We're at 2.1 thousand votes and Andor is still holding 65% of the vote of the best Star Wars content of the Disney era. Wow. So maybe I've just tapped into the little corner of YouTube that loves Andor, but it's every poll. And any way I word it, people are loving this show. I hope everyone in chat, I hope you guys are as well. You guys know I've really been appreciating this show. That's the whole point of this and <laughs> why, why we dig into it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I told you, Father Time, Right after the first three episodes dropped, I said, you're going to love this show. You I'm like Rogue One. I know that. <laughs> you're going to love it. So <clears throat> we'll leave it right there. Any super final thoughts? Uh, Matt K, we'll start with you. Uh, I think we're in for a pretty epic finale. I agree with you that we're going to get a two-parter. That's what I think they're going to do. Um, and I feel like we're going to get not only a good ending point for the season but i think we're going to get just enough of a cliffhanger that's going to keep us wanting more mm -hmm. we already know it's coming you know it's not like it's not up in the air of whether or not season two is coming right it's coming and so we're going to get something at the very end that we're all going to be talking about <laughs> the next several months forward <laughs> and that's my honestly that's my favorite part of being a Star Wars fan while new content is coming out. It's that theorizing. It's the what if. It's all of us talking about. Breaking down the trailers. Mind. Yep. What do you think that shadow could mean in the background? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's so much fun. Whether we're right or wrong, it's fun. And I love it. Yep. Father Time? Um, I am... I, I just take what they give me. I, I know I'm going to like whatever they give me. I, I don't have any great expectations. Um, I will not be upset if they leave loose ends because I didn't notice that there was any until you just asked. And yeah, that, that didn't bother me at all. Cool. Well, we will leave it there. Um, everyone, 
Um, please subscribe to the Matt Cave if you haven't already, because this conversation tonight has been excellent. Um, Matt Cave, I love having you on always. Um, <laughs> Father Time, always enjoy having you on. Everyone in the chat, you guys have been excellent tonight. Um, go ahead and comment. Oh, I think I deleted that banner. <laughs> uh, comment for the Republic in uh, <laughs> in the comment section. <laughs> Nobody video, knows what that means. Chat. I know, I know. If you if you stop the chat, the live chat, it'll actually have the actual comment section. Uh, if you feel so inclined, you can delicately tap that like button. I'm sorry. Okay, is it KG or KG? I don't know. Um, <laughs> either way, we're gonna leave it there for tonight. Great discussion. Lots of fun games and clippable moments. Uh, oh jeez. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Um, oh boy. <laughs> but it was very nice seeing all of you in chat. Good to talk with you guys. We will be here again yeah, this is great. next Monday. We'll see all of you back next Monday. Make sure you come back because yeah. this is good stuff. Yeah. Good yeah. chats. Yeah, put those coffee mugs in the chat and uh, we will see you next time. Until then, thank you very much for watching. If you've been here from the very beginning of the stream, I really appreciate your time. May the stash be with you and I will see you wherever I happen to see you in the galaxy. <laughs>